Hey guys, it's Jv Rumor BHA here bringing you a new video. So as you saw recently, AOTech sent me over a smart plug that we reviewed on the channel. But they came through once again and sent me over their latest temp humidity combo sensor uh, called the AirQ or AERQ. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but it is awesome. As you can see from the picture there, it's pretty small in comparison uh, to other objects around it, definitely worth checking out. Let's get this thing opened up and check it out. So as you can see, it's on their site for about 30 bucks. And again, it covers uh, temp and humidity, so that's a pretty decent price uh, for that type of sensor. This is a Z-Wave product, uh, so of course we'll be connecting it with smart things today, uh, but obviously it will work with your uh, standard Z-Wave hubs as well as, uh, of course, Z-Wave stick if you're using Home Assistant uh, in that fashion as well. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. So for starters, we're going to unbox the device. Uh, and do our normal unboxing and kind of go through all of the specs uh, for this particular sensor. From there, we will, of course, then get it uh, installed and added into SmartThings, since SmartThings, of course, is what I use for all of my Z-Wave and Zigbee products. Once we've done that, we'll go over the configuration and just see what options are available to us within SmartThings. And then, of course, lastly, uh, we will get it added into Home Assistant and just kind of take a look at that and see how all that works. So let's get started. Uh, so here it is, as you can see just off the bat, it is a pretty small box. Uh, not a whole lot of stuff comes with it. This is a battery powered sensor, so of course, uh, you will not be plugging it in or anything like that. Let's go ahead and get this thing opened up. And this thing is crazy small. You basically, you get the sensor and then of course you'll get some instructions on how to set it up. And that's about it. It does already have a battery installed, uh, so you should be good to go. I'm told the battery will last for about a year uh, before needing to be changed, so that's pretty cool. Just to kind of go over some of the specs for you, like I said, uh, it is a Z-Wave Plus product. It is not a repeater uh, because it is the battery uh, powered, so it will not be repeating the signal. Uh, the batteries that it uses are the CR2477 3 volt batteries. And of course, as it states here on the, um, on the manufacturer's specs, uh, that the factory settings will actually last up to two years on a single battery. Uh, I feel like that might be pushing it just a little bit, um, but uh, we'll kind of take a look at it and see what we got. It is somewhat waterproof as far as uh, waterproofing goes. It's IP20 rating, so probably want to keep it indoors. Not a good idea to try to set this thing up outside. I don't think it's going to last. But let's jump over to the next step and get this thing set up in SmartThings. One of the things that I didn't actually mention um, as far as this product goes whenever we were unboxing it was that it also comes with a double-sided piece of 3M tape uh, to allow you to stick it wherever you want to uh, mount this device. I've decided to install mine in my office. Uh, I have a lot of electronics in here, a lot of computers, and so this room always runs kind of hot. And it being at the kind of far end of the house, I feel like it never cooled off very well anyway. The AC just didn't really make it all the way to that end. Uh, so it'd be nice to kind of keep an eye on the temperature in this room and kind of see uh, where that lies as far as uh, comparison to the rest of the house. 
so that's kind of what my plan is for installing this. So I've kind of mounted it underneath a shelf here in my office. All right, so as far as getting this thing set up in SmartThings, it does use a custom device handler. So of course we've kind of gone over these steps before with installing some of the other Z-Wave products that we've done in SmartThings. Um, but again, we're gonna go through this setup here today as well. We'll click on this link here and go ahead and get a copy of the code for this device handler. Just kind of save that somewhere. And then we're going to jump over to uh, the SmartThings IDE. We'll go ahead and log in to our account here. And we're going to go to My Device Handlers. Create new device handler. We'll say from code, and then of course we're gonna paste this code in there. Once we have it pasted in there, we'll go ahead and say publish for me, and then go ahead and do a save as well. At this point, we are ready to move over to the app on our phone and go ahead and get this thing added into SmartThings. So of course here I am in the SmartThings app. We're gonna hit the plus in the top corner. We'll choose device and then we can say scan nearby down there at the bottom. And it should start looking for uh, devices nearby. And basically from the instructions it says to push the button on here three times uh, and that will kind of activate the device and put it into pairing mode. And as you can see here, it automatically finds the device, wants to know if we want to set up in secure setup mode. So we'll just click secure setup. And then of course it asks me where this device is gonna be located. We'll select study here for the room. Oh great, now it's looking for the QR code. I think I saw a QR code on the box, so we're gonna pull the QR code from there. All right, at this point, it actually kind of locked up on my phone and it didn't go any further. Um, it did actually install, but uh, there's nothing else to see as far as the installation goes. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump onto the next step. We'll name it and do everything else as we kind of go through the configuration. All right, so again, here we are in the SmartThings app. If you scroll down here at the bottom, you can see it by default labeled temperature humidity sensor. We'll click on that. Of course, it's already reporting uh, the temp and humidity. Interestingly enough, it also says dew point measurement. So I thought that was kind of uh, interesting uh, to kind of go along with it. If we hit the uh, edit at the top, we can go ahead and name it. Since I put it in my office, I'm gonna call this office sensor. And then of course for the room, we'll set the room to study as well because that's kind of where we have it set up. And then under settings, uh, there's a few options here, not a whole lot. So you have the ability to set the minimum temperature report value. Uh, it's by default set to 20, but it's on a scale of one to 100. We're just gonna leave it as the default. There's one for the minimum humidity report value as well. Uh, and it's on a scale of one to 20. By default for that one, it is set to five. Again, we're just going to leave it as the default.
Now the periodic report basically determines how often you're going to uh, get the information from this device. Uh, it looks like it's from a scale of 900 to 65,535. I'm guessing that's in seconds. I honestly don't know what that measurement is, but by default it is 43,200. I'm just going to leave it at that for the time being. All right, so for the temperature scale, um, it of course uh, is one for Celsius or two for Fahrenheit. And interestingly enough, it doesn't show a default. I'm going to set mine to Fahrenheit because that's what our temperature is in here. And then of course you have the ability to uh, do some offsets if you want to tweak the temperature if it's not reporting exactly what you want. But we're going to leave everything else uh, default. That's pretty much it on our abilities as far as the settings go. Uh, if you click on history over here, you can see uh, you know how often it's been reporting or what it has reported so far. There's not a lot of information here because we just added this. But let's go ahead and move on to that last step and get this thing added into Home Assistant. All right, so adding devices in Home Assistant, as always, is super easy to do if you're using the SmartThings integration. Basically, if we just go into uh, our configuration in Home Assistant web interface here and go to integrations, we're going to look for that SmartThings integration down towards the bottom. These are all in alphabetical order here. You hit the three dots right here and choose Reload and give it just a second it should come back and say that it is done and then of course if we click on all the devices and scroll down we should find one labeled office sensor yes there it is as you can see what's available to us here it's actually reporting the battery so we can keep track of what the battery life is at on that device as well as the humidity and temperature but that's pretty much it guys. We have it added into Home Assistant. Normally at the end of the video, I kind of like to do a uh, see it in action uh, segment here, but there's not a whole lot of things to see in action when it comes to these temperature or humidity sensors. Um, it's not changing very often, obviously, and there's not anything as far as uh, our ability to turn it on or off. So I'm gonna leave that section out altogether. But if you just click on these, you can kind of go in to uh, see what they might look like if they were reporting. Since we just got them in here, there's not a lot of information available to us. It's been pretty steady for the one minute that it's been added, so uh, not uh, a lot of information in Home Assistant as of yet. If you haven't had a chance, jump over to AOTech's website, check out all of the uh, available devices that they have. I'll have a link in the description below for their uh, sales website, which of course has all the items to be purchased. But for just over 30 bucks for this sensor, it's not too bad. Again, if you can get two years out of the battery life on this thing, then I would say it's definitely worth it. We'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll report back um, when it comes time to replace the battery and we'll figure out how long that lasted. Let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. So of course, for starters, we unboxed the device. Once we did that, of course, we installed it and got it set up in the SmartThings app. After that, we went over the configuration and what options were available to us. Lastly, I showed you what that looked like in Home Assistant and uh, we got it added into you there. Again, that's the end of the video, guys. As always, I wanna thank everybody for donating to my Buy Me A Coffee link. Every little bit helps. Uh, if you haven't had a chance, jump over to my spring merchandise page and check out all the Burns Home Automation merchandise. And if you're looking for VPN service, check out IP Vanish. I'll have the link in the description below uh, so you can check out uh, their available options right now and see what they have to offer and what deals they got going on. If you are interested in trading stock, 
hit the link below for my Robinhood account and you and I both will get three free shares of stock. So that's pretty cool. Definitely worth checking out on that as well. As always, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. If there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.